The township of Cherry Hill, New Jersey has a population of over 71,000 residents. With this large of a population, there is a lot of territory to cover and a lot of community to make connections with. This job is tasked to the Cherry Hill Police Department. William Monahan has been serving as chief of the Cherry Hill Police Department since 2014. He has been opening the department's door to the community in order for them to become involved and understand policing better. He explains the importance. Uh, I think it's critically important uh, both as a leader of a law enforcement agency as well as uh, a police officer in a town uh, that we're transparent uh, with the community members that we serve, with the residents that we serve, and not just the people that live in Cherry Hill, uh, those that come to Cherry Hill either to take part in uh, the, you know, the, the large array of dining options, shopping. Uh, so it's important for people to have an understanding of who we are and how we do things. Chief Monahan has met many community leaders during his time in this position. His goal is to understand community concerns and at the same time form relationships with leaders who are proactive in the community. At the family church in Voorhees, New Jersey, Ted Winsley is the pastor, but many don't know that he actually serves as a police chaplain for Cherry Hill. He explains how he met Chief Monahan and how he got the position. About five years ago, um, we launched our church um, at Temple Emmanuel um, in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Uh, it's called the Family Church, and I actually met um, Chief uh, Monahan at National Night Out, and uh, he came right up to me, he introduced himself. Um, we actually invited him to our church when we launched, and um, shortly thereafter, he said, hey, man, I, would you be interested in, in possibly being our chaplain? So he sent me to a, a training program, and uh, I think it's been, been five years uh, ever since. With being a police chaplain, Pastor Ted is in the community of Cherry Hill a lot. He helps not only police officers, but members of the public. He explains his role. We, we, we really help in, in many different ways. I think it's important people realize that our first responsibility is really for the, the police department, for the actual um, officers, to really help them um, just from a, from a mental health perspective. Um, if they need just somebody to listen to, um, to, to be there, we're in the process of trying to put together just programs for their families. Um, but for the department in particular, uh, one of the two major things that we do um, or we actually do uh, what's called a, um, not a station house adjustment. We're actually in the process of doing that. And, and that is where, um, where minors, if a minor were to uh, have a, a minor offense or misdemeanor, instead of going um, into the system, uh, they actually would call on the chaplains who would put them through a station house adjustment, you know, a community service or any type of mentoring program so they don't have to go into the system and they have an opportunity really to correct the behavior um, the other one are, are death notifications. I don't know if people realize it, but when uh, members of the community pass away, um, it's the responsibility of the police department. Oftentimes, they're the first ones to notify the first of kin. So one of the things that we do is we actually go beside them. Esther Ted has been very satisfied with the department's approach on the involvement of community in policing events. He explains the importance. I think, again, it kind of gives an um, a, a open-door policy. It allows people to realize, because, you know, oftentimes people want to complain about things that they're not willing to be a part of. <laughs> so um, I, I loved his approach, and that was, um, even with the whole hiring process, um, it was open-handed. He allowed the community members to come in and to see the test that was being given, to be a part of the test process, to ask questions, you know, um, and, and, and again, like I said, to really be a part of it. And I think what it does is it, it does just that. It it allows people to realize that there's nothing underhanded taking place or and or, you know, that's the amazing thing about diversity, about the diversity of ideas, about seeing it a different way. It showed that the department was open to, hey, guess what? Um, you know, we've done it this way and, and it's gotten this result. Our desire is to get a different result. So let's have different ideas, different concepts. Um, so, again, I, I think that it was very beneficial. I think it create it is creating a greater diversity in the department. I think it's a, it's creating a greater awareness. Um, and it's also allowing the department themselves to realize that, hey, if you want something different or if you want something you've never done, you have to do something that you haven't done before. At the Jewish Family and Children's Services in Cherry Hill, Marla Mayers is the executive director. The focus on the center's work is to help vulnerable people to acquire the resources they need to live a fulfilling life. 
She explains how the JFCS and Cherry Hill Police Department formed a relationship. Our relationship with the Cherry Hill Police Department um, actually began, um, I guess it was about 2014, and um, I had had an opportunity to engage. I, I, I can't remember how, but I met the chief, who was so awesome and terrific. And he and I, he might have been here at our Federation building at some kind of an event. And he and I started talking um, about the, um, the opiate epidemic as well as teen suicide and how prevalent it had been becoming in our community. And he said to me, I'm, I'm there with you and I want to help you to spread the word about um, what these issues are and how people can get help. And he started to educate me about how friendly and wonderful the police were. That they weren't there just to, as people always assume, to arrest you or get you in trouble, but they were there to help kind of save you, just like we were. Over the years, the JFCS and Cherry Hill Police Department created two very dynamic and far-reaching programs. Marla explains what they are and how they have helped community members. One. Uh, was called Right in Our Backyard. It's uh, an addiction awareness program. It just morphed into a new iteration of itself. It expanded into uh, other kinds of substances beside, beside opiates. Uh, it is now called a One Step at a Time, and the police department is still actively involved. So that's been going on for uh, a good eight years. We have um, affected the lives of countless thousands of teens and tweens, as well as their guardians. And then during the time we were working on that, we also got together to develop uh, another beautiful and meaningful program called This Life Counts, all about teen and tween suicide, the triggers, the warning signs, the how to get help, and how to normalize conversations about mental health issues. So together, we, uh, we developed that as well. And um, the greatest thing of all is having the um, ability to work with to work with all of the officers who are such an important part of these programs. They are speakers at the programs. They are present at the programs. They really teach everyone the, the idea of community policing. With the Cherry Hill Police Department being involved in the programs at JFCS, the center has received a lot of positive feedback, as Marla explains. I think that the goal of educating folks about mental health, about a, a substance abuse, and coupling it with the education about the wonderful police department and how they're there to help right. and to lift people um, has been enormously effective. And a lot of times in our evaluations, the participants will comment, gee, you know, I feel a lot better about the police. Right. And, and that's what it's all about. And I feel really good that we were able to help you guys to accomplish that particular goal while also elevating us because the presence and the participation of the police in the these kinds of community workshops has actually elevated us and has um, allowed us for it has allowed people to say hey JMCS is pretty top dollar if they have the police involved with them they must be doing something right and and I think it's a beautiful partnership. At Cherry Hill High School West, Dr. Kwame Morton has been the principal for the past eight years. During these years, he has been instrumental in forging a relationship between his school and the Cherry Hill Police Department. The relationship between West and the Police Department is a fantastic relationship. Uh, I, I, I would say I probably give Chief Monaghan uh, much of the credit for that relationship. Uh, we initially met many years ago at uh, a community event down the block at a, at a church and uh, he actually approached me and introduced himself. I guess he had just maybe moved into the role. He had been promoted to the role of chief and I, I found him to be so personable. It was a bit odd <laughs> to, to be quite honest. It was a bit odd. He was so, such a personable uh, guy and he talked about potentially doing things uh, in, in terms of working together. So he, he fostered that initial contact. Out of this relationship, the police department has partnered with West and has created programs that students can join. The ultimate goal is for students to have a different perspective of police. The, the programs have, have, have varied. Um, I think first and foremost, the commitment to being present in the building has been 
integral, I think, in forging relationship and uh, demystifying uh, what it means to interact with police. So typically, if you think about police, they're appropriately titled law enforcement. Enforcement for a reason. And, you know, the badge at times and the uniform can, um, can, can create like a, a, a cloud of uh, uh, intimidation mm -hmm. over, over some members of the community. So I think, again, like they've, they've been able to break down those walls. Um, our, our orientation events, when we bring new students in, the guys are here with us. Uh, they, don't eat, they don't eat my hot dogs that I make, but, but they're here interacting with the kids and talking with the kids and welcoming our new crop of kids in. They've done that for several years. Uh, they started a program in which uh, they worked with our track team. It's called Run To Us, Not From Us, uh, where they came out and officers ran with our, our track kids after school. Phenomenal. I saw the success of that in talking with our kids. Our kids found it to be somewhat... Uh, interesting you know and, and, and an idea where they are able to interact with law enforcement agents they, they found it to be just just fascinating uh, and then we've, we've been able to expand that as well where uh, the, the department has supported us with our initiative for restorative practices. Dr. Morton has been in the Cherry Hill School District since 2008. Over the years national events have taken place regarding schools and police. He explains why it is important for the district to have a relationship with the police department. So I think the relationship is, is critical because I believe uh, schools are the epicenter of the community, right? So we are charged with the responsibility, our school district is charged with the responsibility of creating that next generation of citizens, hopefully for the town, and citizens for the state, citizens for the, for the community at large. Um, and, and as such, individuals and members of our community who are charged with the responsibilities, uh, whatever they may be, whether it be protecting, whether it be educating, um, I think they, they need to come together to, to support the epicenter of our community, right? So um, the traditional roles I've mentioned, uh, law enforcement, I think Chief Monaghan has presented a new idea. We can enforce the law while also focusing on this concept of community policing. And community policing does exactly what it says. It, it pulls together the community. Um, so it's essential that our kids, number one, see uh, our law enforcement agents as, as critical members of our community. But then I think the other big piece is, is as I mentioned, um, the badge, the, 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 the uniform, the attire, you know, the weapons and things. They're a bit intimidating uh, for many. To humanize, but they're human beings, right, that are behind that. And many of our uh, officers have kids that have been in school here, and I, and I know them to be concerned citizens, concer concerned parents like myself and, and like other parents. Our kids get to learn that our, our police officers are people. Mm -hmm. They are people with uh, emotions, feelings, passions, desires, like, you know, they concerned parents as well. At the American Legion Post 372 in Cherry Hill, Sue Quinn has been involved in a variety of volunteer roles over the past 15 years. She has worked a lot with the Cherry Hill Police Department and talks about how the relationship began. Uh, in listening to some of the stories from some of our older veterans, some of which are deceased now, um, they always had a lot of great stories about the PD. So I'm not sure how long ago it started, but many years ago. Personally, my involvement started 15 years ago when I joined and it's really just grown since our Legion has grown as well. The American Legion hosts different events and programs throughout the year that the police department attends. Sue describes what all of them are. Uh, they're involved in our annual events, some of which are Veterans Day service, mm -hmm. Memorial Day service, um, flag retirement ceremony along with the uh, Boy Scouts and flagging of the veterans graves at Locustwood and Cherry Hill and also at Colestown. And uh, Locustwood happens to be uh, where the Cherry Hill police officer that was killed, Louis Duffy is, so they always make sure, you know, to flag that grave. The Cherry Hill Police and the American Legion are always working together. Sue describes why it is important for the Legion to have a relationship with the department. Well, I think it's good to have a good relationship with any, everybody in the community, so we work well together. Um, and I think one of the common traits that the police department and our military veterans have in common is 
uh, they protect our freedoms, maintain law and order. It's something that they both do. And, but there's so much more than that. And just to reiterate a little bit on our interaction with the Cherry Hill Police Department, in addition to our annual events, there's other local events that we participate in, which is the Greg D'Alessio 5K run, the stand down uh, for our homeless and at-risk veterans at the Cherry Hall Armory. And while we do a lot of this on a professional level with the PD, the officers also belong to either the FOP or the PBA, and they volunteer their time to the community as well, whether it's uh, holding parties for special needs kids, toys for the kids at Shriners, food drives. So we also partake in those events with them. And I think that just really goes to show where their heart is, because not only are they doing this on, you know, when they're working, but their time off, they're also giving to the community. And I think that says a lot about them. The police department has a designated unit to make connections with the community. It is called the Community Response Unit and it was implemented three years ago. Officer Anthony Amato has been involved in the department's community response unit for about four years. He talks about how he became involved. Uh, there was an opening in community policing, which is now called the community response unit. Uh, I thought it was gonna be a good combination to get myself and my dog. I work in the canine unit. My dog is uh, Canine May. So we can get on a more uh, on the daytime schedule and we can get into the schools and we can meet people and I can integrate the uh, the canine unit into different programs such as uh, bringing our dogs into the school and doing demonstrations and I wanted to be more integral into the the fabric of the community really so there's been a whole a whole bunch of different programs that we've developed over the, the years. The community response unit is charged with a variety of tasks in order to get community involved Officer Amato explains what the community unit is. Community response unit is a, it's a unit of four individuals at this point. We have four officers in the community response unit. We handle all of the social media, uh, such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We do all sorts of different administrative tasks, such as uh, compiling data, and we send out that data to different civic associations by district, so we can let the public know exactly what kind of crime is, is occurring in Cherry Hill. and. Um, we have different programs and such that we're responsible for. The goal of the unit is to make community connections and allow community members to see police in a different light, as Officer Amato explains. We want to show the community how much it means to us to be a part of the community and to show them that there's a whole different aspect of law enforcement that isn't just the car stops, it's not just the, the things that you might see on TV, that we're really over here every single day trying to make the community response unit an effective unit. We're trying to create new relationships. I think that's what's most important. We want to maintain a healthy level of communication with the juveniles that are in the town, such as, you know, the children that are going to our schools and, you know, shopping at our stores with their parents. We want them to feel comfortable uh, coming to our town. Uh, we, want to, we want to see them out at our community events. You know, how do we make them more comfortable at community events? And make it a more engaging experience? Well, we have more community events. We have um, officers that want to speak to them. We want to, uh, you know, keep things moving forward and have a really great relationship with our community members. Officer Gavin Ferbert is another officer who is involved in the Community Response Unit. He has been an officer for 19 years and explains why he wanted to get involved with the unit. I, I've always been uh, service oriented, um, again, like I said, and when I found out that the Cherry Hill Police Department had a community relations unit that dealt specifically with conflict resolution, uh, that was one of the things that kind of drew me to this particular uh, unit. Um, I've always been, I, I guess, so to speak, well, well versed in putting um, or bringing people together is what I should say. So um, this unit I, I thought would be a good fit for me. The community response unit is all about positive community interactions and solving issues members may have. Officer Ferbert explains. Obviously we want to dispel any negative stereotypes. Uh, we want to, we want the public to know that, uh, you know, the police, police officers are, are people too and that we, we, we can relate to any of the issues that, the, that they're dealing with. Um, many times uh, people don't really get to see uh, the police, policemen and women doing their jobs um, outside of arresting someone or 
writing tickets. So when when we get out <clears throat> and we're able to do uh, things um, in the community, it, it, it allows them to see us in a different perspective. The unit wants to continue showing the public that the department is there for them. Officer Ferbert explains the unit's goals moving forward. We just want to continue to do the good work that we've been doing. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has kind of uh, put a damper on a lot of the activities that we would normally be doing. Um, uh, National night out, unfortunately, last year got canceled. Uh, our junior police officer um, class um, program that we have during the summer, that got canceled. Uh, but moving forward, we, we want to continue these activities and, and build on, on these relationships uh, because it does nothing, um, does nothing more than show us in a positive light. So we want to continue to bridge the gaps between the police and the community and, and, and show them, uh, show the people of this community that, that they have a professional and a reliable police department. Officer Christine Town has been with the Cherry Hill Police Department for almost eight years. She explains why she chose the profession. I personally wanted to get into police work just because I wanted to help people. Um, and it's not your average job, nine to five, where every day you're doing the same thing, day in and day out. Every day is different, every call is different, and that's kind of what I enjoy about it, is being able to get in and out of the car, in and out of the police station, talk with people, and that, that's honestly the best part of the job. Positive community interactions are Officer Town's goal when responding to calls for service. She admits that every situation is different. It depends on everything. Every, every call is a different, is a different new thing and there's so many circumstances and underlying conditions that you have to always constantly consider and you know keep in the back of your mind and my biggest thing is obviously knowing that I'm following the law and right. whatever yeah, I do is policy. it's going to be lawful and I got to make sure that um, I'm yeah, not yeah. violating anyone's civil rights or any sort of rights whatsoever so that's our main thing is okay right. let's okay. let's follow the law to the letter of the T you know um, and then whatever someone's problem is, let's figure out what their problem is and let's figure out how to solve it and, right. you know, come to a solution for them. Many negative incidents involving police around the country have taken place over the past year. Many people having negative perceptions of police officers. Officer Town wants people to know this about police officers in general. We're normal people. <laughs> we are We are the average normal person that got into this job for the right reasons to help people. Um, and, you know, there, there's always going to be negative things out there. There's always going to be negative things about cops or teachers or doctors or lawyers. There's always going to be, someone's always going to have a negative thought. And I think we all try to put that in the back of our mind as much as possible and try to focus on doing our job the right way. Officer Ashley Pledger is another officer assigned to the patrol division. She currently works the night shift and she has been with the department for over a year. She explains why she chose a career in law enforcement. Just more so, yeah, I know everyone will give you the basic answer, you know, to serve, help and serve the community, make a positive impact, but it really comes down to me personally where I've had nothing but positive experiences in, with law enforcement since I was little, and I just felt like it was in my blood to serve and protect this country just like those who have served and protected our country um, through military, through law enforcement, those who have lost their lives, and I just feel like it's it's one of the most honorable ways to not only make an impact for yourself or for your family, your friends, and those who are around you, but also for the community. Um, it is important to me to show the world that there are good people in this world who will protect you and do what they can to serve you in the right way, and I just feel like that that was my calling. Officer Pledger is out patrolling the community of Cherry Hill during her whole shift. When calls are assigned to her, she thinks about the situation she'll be arriving to. The one thing that she thinks about the most is how she can help the community. Just how can I make a better impact today? How can I help someone? How can I make their day? Um, how can I help and serve my community uh, the way they should be helped and served? And really, you know, for example, when we get sent to a call, how can I, what, are, what, are, what is my job? What can I do on my way to that call that's going to help uh, alleviate the situation? So that's, that's really all it is when I come to work is you know, how can I make a positive impact today? There's been a lot of negative news regarding police officers around the country. Officer Pledger wants the community to understand this about police officers. Just to understand that our goals are to do what's right. There is more good in this world than there is bad. I can't speak for 
anything bad that's going on, but I can speak for all the good. I can say that our goals are to genuinely help the public. Our goals are to genuinely save lives and our goal is to genuinely make a difference. Um, with everything going on, it is tough to hear. It is hard to see that there are people who have to go through things that are so detrimental, but at the end of the day, you know, we are here for a reason. We're here for a purpose. We serve and honor our oath. We protect this badge and we're not just people behind the badge. We are people in front of the badge too. And I think that's very important for people to know is we've been there and if we haven't been there, we'll help you find a way to, to build more relationship and to build more understanding of what is going on. There have been many negative perceptions of police officers and departments due to officer-involved shootings across the country in 2020. In June of 2020, in response to the George Floyd murder, a Black Lives Matter protest ended at Town Hall. Chief Monahan talks about how his department still wanted to make a positive community connection while also understanding protesters' concerns. Uh, we were trying to find ways to attempt to de-escalate the potential of the protest prior to it even starting. Uh, one of our uh, detectives at the time, who's now a sergeant, uh, Sheldon Bryant, had an idea to uh, maybe engage the community with a barbecue. So uh, I thought it was an, an excellent idea and something that really, if you look nationally, wasn't taking place. So we partnered with, uh, with a local grocery store, Wegmans, and were able to uh, get the uh, supplies. And then we put the information out uh, to the public uh, that we were going to engage the protesters and invite them once they're here to have a, a bottle of water and a hot dog with us and just have a conversation. We wanted to have it take place after their protest. We didn't want to stifle their ability to, to, to voice uh, their concerns. Um, but then we also, again, back on the heels of, you know, being transparent and open and building relationships, we felt it was important that, uh, you know, after the protest that we take that opportunity and build relationships with the people that had come here uh, and let them see who we are. And again, not necessarily just as police, uh, but as human beings, because the badge, the uniform, the police car, at times are barriers to communication. People fail to see us as human beings. You know, we weren't born police officers, we're human beings first. And uh, it's important for officers to understand that. And it's also important for the public to understand that as well. We're no different than, you know, anyone else. Pastor Ted was also on hand in his official Cherry Hill Police Chaplain role and was able to have a front row seat and observe the police department's interaction with the protesters. That was really an opportunity that it was so eye-opening to me. Again, I, I always knew that we had an amazing force, but, but to kind of see them in action, first of all, to see how human they are. Um, you know, I, so I had an opportunity to kind of be behind the scenes even before the officers went out to en engage the situation. Of course, man, you're watching on television. You see what's happening around the, the country. You're seeing what's happening at Philadelphia. And so even just seeing, you know, the officers come together um, and, and, and desiring to handle it as humans, you know, not us against them. So I had an opportunity to kind of see just even the speech that um, – the officer Monahan, the chief police, had an opportunity to kind of share with the officers to kind of quell their fears and let them know, hey, everybody's going home um, and it's not us against them. And then I also really had the opportunity being right next to, um, to the chief of police while it was going down and, and seeing them kind of diminish uh, the fears and allowing people to realize, hey, I remember um, uh, the officer Monahan, well, the first thing that he said was, hey, um, what happened with the whole George Floyd that wasn't a police officer that committed that crime. He said that was a criminal. We, we right. don't agree with that, um, and we stand with you. And so, so that was just an amazing time just to see the humanity. Um, and and I, I'll just say it this way. I mean, I say it a lot in, in my industry, um, but, but just to see the love, you know, j just to see the, the humanity um, and how the officers really carried themselves and allowed people, this isn't black or white, this is, this is a human issue. Right. The Cherry Hill Police Department has continued to stay ahead in regards to technology that benefit not only their organization, but the community. Recently, the department purchased a new technology called Signal Sidearm, which Chief Monahan describes. So Signal Sidearm is a sensor that is uh, attached to police officers' duty holsters, uh, which holds their handgun. 
It has a magnetic sensor inside of it, and what it does is uh, when the handgun is removed from the holster, it'll automatically ensure that all body cameras and in-car cameras are on within a certain radius of that uh, removal of the handgun. Technology is important, you know, because I spoke about just the, uh, the body cameras and in-car cameras. We make a large investment in that equipment to ensure that we capture every aspect of an incident, both as a mechanism for safety for the public, as well as uh, for the police officers. And uh, because we leverage so much uh, funding into uh, technology, we want to ensure that we attempt to eliminate any human error that might take place. And by human error, what I mean is the body camera has to be physically turned on by the police officer. Whereas our in-car cameras, as soon as an officer turns on their overhead lights, it automatically turns the car uh, interior uh, camera on or car camera. So there is the potential for an officer to either miss the button in a high stress situation or be in a situation where they could be in a convenience store and just getting a cup of coffee, uh, a high stress incident takes place where they might have to uh, use deadly force. They don't have time to turn on the camera or they miss it. Uh, so just by the removal of the handgun, it'll automatically turn on uh, that camera if it was off. And then if there were backup officers that arrived at the scene, and if they didn't have time to either turn on their camera or a human element error took place where they just failed to turn it on um, because they were trying to address uh, the safety concerns that they saw before them, uh, their cam was, cameras would be turned on as well. With so much territory to cover in Cherry Hill, the police department relies on members of the community to reach out and let them know what's going on. Chief Monahan shares this message. We cannot police this community on our own. Uh, the police are the community and the community are the police. And uh, there are many times throughout the course of my uh, tenure as chief where I've relied on advice or uh, reached out to community members uh, for, for help in certain situations. And uh, just as much as they sometimes would call us, we also call them. So it's important to have those connections. We're open to making as many connections as possible. Uh, we want to know the good, the bad, uh, you know, how people feel. Uh, so, you know, honest, uh, soul-searching uh, questions are, are, are great. We want as, as much contact as possible. So please reach out to us, get engaged. Uh, once we get through this pandemic, uh, if we have events or if we are doing a charity run or anything like that to, to come out, even if you're not going to run, just come out and say hi. Uh, give us an opportunity to just connect. The Cherry Hill Police Department stands ready to serve and make connections with the community. This is only one example of a department that wants to be transparent with their community. More are out there waiting for their story to be told.